NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, thank you so much for joining Bloomberg TV. Thanks so much for having me. So we heard from President Biden today, and he was steadfast about U.S. support for Ukraine. At the same time he was speaking, Speaker McCarthy from the House of Representatives, leading the House of Representatives, said that there are concerns about oversight for U.S. dollars going to Ukraine. He has a lot of questions for President Zelensky. He'll be heading to Washington. Are you concerned about the U.S. aid and U.S. support continuing to help Ukraine? Well, I'm confident that the United States, as all the NATO allies, will continue to support uh, Ukraine uh, because it will be a tragedy for the Ukrainians if President Putin wins in Ukraine, but it will also be dangerous for us. We will be more vulnerable because then the message to him, but also to China, is that when they use military force, when they violate international law, when they invade another country, they get what they want, and that will make us more vulnerable. So it's in our security, security interest to support Ukraine, uh, and therefore I'm confident that the United States will continue to support uh, Ukraine. It's not just in the U.S. There is this feeling of war fatigue. Um, obviously this would be easier if there was almost a timeline when American individuals and American taxpayers knew there is an end to this. What are you seeing on the ground in terms of the counteroffensive? So first of all, what we have seen is that uh, the support we provide to Ukraine is make, making a huge difference. Um, uh, that's the best proof that actually it, 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 the, the weapons we are delivering actually reaches the front lines because we have to remember where we started. At the beginning of this war, uh, uh, we many believed and, and, and many also also believed that Ukraine would fall within uh, uh, weeks and Kiev will fall within days. Uh, we have seen the opposite. Uh, the Ukrainians have been able to liberate the north uh, around Kiev, uh, the east around Kharkiv, and then the south around uh, Kherson. And now they are. At the moment, do you think they're winning? Well, they are. Uh, they are now conducting a, an, an offensive. They are gradually gaining ground. We would all would like to see that uh, uh, go faster. Uh, but of course, they are uh, faced with dug in Russian uh, defensive lines, uh, enormous amounts of mines, and that takes time. But the alternative not to support them which will, will be much more costly for us in the long run, because then we will uh, be more vulnerable for uh, Russian or uh, Chinese coercion and military threats. Uh, and therefore, uh, we uh, have to ensure that President Putin loses in Ukraine. Is there more pressure to strike a peace agreement? It's for Ukrainians to decide uh, when the time is right to, uh, and when the condition, conditions are right to, uh, to sit down. Uh, so far there are no indications that Russia wants to sit down and negotiate uh, a just and lasting uh, peace. So if we want peace, if we want a negotiated outcome, the best way of achieving that is to strengthen Ukraine on the battlefield. Because that's the only way to convince Putin that he will not win on the battlefield, but has to sit down and negotiate a, 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 a lasting uh, peace. So uh, the strength on the battlefield decides the strength on the uh, negotiating table. That, therefore, military support is the way to peace. I want to ask you about NATO spending. I spoke to Annalena Baerbach on Sunday, and she talked about it, how it was a shock with the Trump administration, um, not just questioning U.S being part of NATO, but really at the foundation where Trump was after was that everyone pulled their weight and hit 2% targets. Germany is now not doing a 2% annually on their target. Has anything changed? Yes, a lot has changed. We made a, a decision in NATO in 2014 that all allies should spend 2% of GDP on defense uh, within a decade. Uh, since then, uh, NATO allies, all NATO allies, have uh, increased defense uh, spending. More and more allies are reaching the uh, target of 2% uh, for uh, defense. Uh, and in total, uh, we have added 450 billion extra uh, for defense across Europe and, uh, and Canada. Then, of course, I want all those who are not yet at 2% to be there. Germany will be there soon. Uh, all the big allies will be there uh, soon. Uh, so things are really moving in the right direction. But it was a mistake for them to not put it in legal text? As, because Olaf Scholz in Vilnius said, we will hit an annual target of 2%. Well, uh, allies have done this in different ways. What matters is that the money is pouring in. I mean, the allies are really uh, increasing defense spending. This year, uh, defense spending across Europe and Canada increased by 8.3% in real terms. That's the biggest increase uh, in decades uh, in, uh, in NATO. Uh, and, and they do so because they realize that we live in a more dangerous world and also realize that it has to be a fair burden sharing within uh, the alliance, which is also demonstrated in the support to Ukraine. The United States has provided a significant and, and and unprecedented support. And that's great. But European allies 
have also provided tens of billions in military support to Ukraine together with Canada and they're also providing uh, uh, a lot of economic and humanitarian support. So our support to Ukraine demonstrates uh, what we can achieve when we have burden sharing between North America and Europe uh, in supporting Ukraine. And NATO is expanding and you met with Erdogan, uh, the president of Turkey, while here alongside the UN General Assembly. What is your sense about Sweden actually joining NATO? Because Erdogan has also been making some comments about his concerns about what he's still seeing uh, in Sweden that unnerves him and the Turkish electorate. Well, Turkey has some legitimate security concerns, uh, uh, especially related to uh, uh, terrorism. No other NATO allies suffer more terrorist attacks than, uh, than Turkey and PKK. Uh, it's not only uh, uh, a terrorist organization in Turkey, but, but it's recognized as a terrorist organization across uh, uh, the whole uh, alliance. And therefore I welcome that Sweden has decided uh, to work more closely with uh, Turkey in fighting these terrorist organizations. And some of them are also very closely linked to organized crime in Sweden. Uh, the terrorist organizations in... Uh, but has in, uh, Erdogan uh, told you Parliament will vote on it in October? Well, Erdogan stated very clearly, both in meetings with uh, me, uh, uh, in a joint statement that we agreed, and also uh, publicly in press conferences, uh, that uh, they will ratify uh, the accession protocol for uh, Sweden. And he also stated clearly that this will happen as soon as possible, meaning that, uh, uh, that the Turkish Parliament needs to convene, and they will convene uh, later on this fall. The meeting we saw last week between Kim Jong-un and Vladimir Putin, I imagine, was concerning to you. How much do you think North Korea is really going to be supplying Russia in the sense that do you think it'll make an impact actually on the battlefield? Well, it's a bit too early to say how much uh, they will uh, uh, deliver. Uh, any support to, to Russia's illegal uh, war will be uh, the wrong thing uh, to uh, do. Uh, it will be a violation of UN Security Council resolutions agreed here in New York uh, many times. Uh, but uh, it also demonstrates how isolated uh, Russia is. They need to go to North Korea uh, to get uh, support, to try to get support. Uh, and uh, this is a big contrast to Ukraine, which uh, receives support from now, military support from more than 50 nations. Uh, they, they, they meet in something called uh, the Ukraine Contact uh, Group, uh, led by the United States, mobilizing support uh, across NATO allies and other partner countries. So that's a big difference. For that ammunition, they have to go to North Korea, but for non-lethal trade, they are still trading a ton with China. At some point, do you foresee China stepping over that red line and providing more support to Putin? So, well, what we have seen for a long time is that uh, China is supporting Ukraine's, uh, sorry, Russia's uh, war efforts by propping up their economy, but also by spreading uh, the Russian narrative about this, uh, this uh, war. And therefore, it, it will be a big mistake if China also provides lethal aid. And that has been the message from the United States, from NATO allies, that they should not do that. President Biden has called Xi Jinping a dictator a number of times. Annalena Baerbach also labeled him a dictator while she was in the United States. Do you prescribe, prescribe to that? Do you think NATO views Xi Jinping as a dictator? Well, we don't view uh, China as an adversary. I have used the phrase an authoritarian country. They don't share our values. Uh, they don't believe in democracy, freedom of press, uh, of, of speech, of, of, of media. Uh, and therefore, we need to take very seriously when China now is uh, growing, becoming stronger and stronger militarily, investing heavily in new military equipment, nuclear weapons, uh, it just demonstrates the importance of NATO. Because if the United States is concerned about China, which I understand, uh, then it's even more important to keep your friends and allies close. Uh, and, and through NATO, the United States has more than 30 friends and allies. And together, we represent 50% of the world's military might and 50% of the world's economic might. So as long as the United States uh, uh, stay together with all the allies in NATO, we are safe and we're able to deal with any threat and challenge from any country in the world. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg.